to now answer the question. The, uh, Sandy would like me to do this one, and so since he's the boss, uh, the, re the request is, is like a uh, proclamation nailed on the wall, you know. And even though Sandy would really ask, ask, ask for this one, uh, I'd like to now answer a question that's been, I know it's been burning in your minds for a long time, and that, that is why can't English people, educated Englishmen, sing the blues convincingly? This is a, something that came to mind because I know the English have been, Europeans especially English, have been very appreciative of American jazz music. They've written all the first books about it. They did all the, a uh, lot of research and discographies and all that kind of thing. But they, by and large, can't sing the blues. And this will answer that question. This is a thing called the English blues, a composition which I wrote in a moment between waking and sleeping. and which uh, has an introduction written especially for this occasion by the late Sir Edward Elgar. Sir Edward Elgar, you might remember, is the gentleman who wrote Pomp and Circumstance, to which most of you graduated. You walked down the aisle, boom, 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 boom. I met Sir Edward Elgar on a wagon lit going down to Smyrna, Turkey, uh, for the annual fig picking festival. You see? I must confess this about myself. I am, and always will be, an avid amateur fig picker. <laughs> there are many varieties, uh, I, and uh, when you, what you do is you put them between the pages of a book, and then you throw the book away, <laughs> because you can't open it again. And so this, unfortunately, Edward Elgar and I spoke on the telephone, and then he uh, promptly died. <laughs> I say, I guess that was hard cheese for me, because uh, I had no introduction, but true to form, he was in the process of writing the introduction when he was stricken by a fatal case of phlebas, the disease which makes you walk like you're sitting down. And uh, it was terminal. Edward passed away, and I had to get an order from the Metropolitan, the Home Secretary, and the Metropolitan Police Council to exhume the body. This we did uh, in, the, in the dark of night, carrying pocket torches, holding the pocket torches above the grave, opened up the crypt, and there, clutched in his bony hand, what remained of it was on a, written on an ordinary piece of fool's cap, was this introduction to the English blues, which I will now proceed to do for you. The English blues. Thank you. Thanks so much. Very much. She's a big fat mama, the meat shaking on her bones. I say, she's a big fat mama, the meat shaking on her bones. Oh, rather a saucy thought, that. What? And every time she shakes it, makes a skinny woman lose her home. Dear, dear. Mama, mama, mama. Where did you stay last night? I said, mama, mama, mama. Where did you stay last night? At the Hawthorne Inn. The last time that I saw you, your clothes didn't look just right. There's a hole in your Macintosh, I believe. <laughs> I'm going to get myself some bricks to build my chimney higher. And they will say this was their finest hour. I'm going to get myself some bricks to build my chimney higher. Never have so many holes, so much, to so few. To keep that neighbor's tomcat from putting out my fire. Instrumental interlude. That's a suburb of London, you know. I was born in Soho, raised in Battersea by a demented old Turkish nanny. And I ain't going to let no one woman make a fat mouth 
out of me. I said, a fat mouth out of me. I've only loved three women, three women in my life. Every night is back to the digs with this rotten guitar. I've only loved three women, three women in my life. One at a time, you understand, not simultaneously. <laughs> my mummy, my nanny, and the woman who ruined my life. <laughs> A bit of a bit of tomfoolery, as it were. <laughs> What's next, Bunky? <laughs> 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 oh, boy. Shall we whoop it up? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> All right. Here's a, since we're supposed to be doing sort of a semi-tribute, which is a, a, a semi-tribute is like a small tribute to Fats, Thomas Fats Eeny Waller, that marvelous, marvelous piano player and uh, beautiful entertainer. Uh, there'll never be another like him, and they the songs that he wrote that you don't hear every day is called I've Got a Feeling I'm Falling and we'd like to do that for you now. One, two, one, two, three, four.
Oh, next we have a song uh, written by Carl Kress and Dick McDonald, two very busy guitar players in the 1930s. Then, then uh, Dick McDonald died, so he wasn't too busy. Uh, <laughs> Carl Kress lived until 1964 and teamed up later on with George Barnes, and then he was with Tony Matola in the meantime. Always in, uh, coming off of studio things, do play guitar duets. And this was the thing they wrote in 1935, and it's a rather pleasant uh, piece of business called Stage Fright. This is a song written by that uh, famous Harlem Stride piano player, James P. Johnson, who wrote such wonderful songs as, oh, uh, let me see, the Charleston, If I Could Be With You, One Hour Tonight, and Old Fashioned Love, that's when you turn the lights out, and uh, 